Hey guys, welcome to Tech Time. I'm your host Nero, and I'm sure all of you have heard about the Apple Keynote, the iPhone X, and even all the leaks and rumors that happened before the release of the phone. But on the 12th of September, Apple had their official keynote, and now we know everything about the products that they released. Wait, didn't we already know everything about their products? Because of all the leaks and rumors that happened before the release of the iPhone X, when they actually unveiled the phone, I was half expecting Tim Cook to be like, yes, all the leaks and rumors are correct. This is the iPhone X. And yes, all the features that were rumored are correct. We also included an exploding battery. I hope you enjoyed the keynote. There is a demo area in the back. And I hope you all enjoy using the iPhone X. Thank you for coming. But in all honesty, the iPhone X is here along with its siblings 8 and 8 Plus. And this video is everything that you actually need to know about the phone before you go out and buy it or before you go out and hate it. That was a very long intro. What are we doing? Before jumping into the iPhone 8, 8 Plus and the iPhone 10, I'd just like to mention some other things that were released at the Apple Keynote event. So they did unveil a new Apple TV, which is just the same as last year's, but with the 4K and HDR support, as well as the Apple A10X processor, which is the same as the iPad Pro. There's also a new Apple Watch with LTE support, and LTE is just a 4G communication standards for high-speed video and audio communications. The LTE Apple Watches also have a new faster processor, but they didn't really give it a name in the keynote. And the disappointing thing about the new Apple Watch is that even with this LTE support, it, you can't actually expect it to completely replace your phone. With the Apple Watch's small battery size, you can only do about one hour of talk time on LTE, which is a bit disappointing for all of you who has like six hours of talk time with your friends and stuff. They also talked a little bit about the AR support that the new phones are gonna have, but really the icing on the cake was the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, and the cherry on top was the iPhone 10. Let's begin with the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus. The 8 and 8 Plus should really be called the 7S and 7S Plus because it really didn't bring anything new to the table. It was just incremental upgrades to what's already there on the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. The phones have an all new glass back design and Apple says that these are the strongest glass that's ever been put in an iPhone. They apparently made it stronger with the power of science, but we'll have to test that when we actually get the phone in our hands. There are also new colors. There's a silver, a new gold, which in the rumors were called blush gold, but it's still called gold by Apple. And there's also a space gray, which is similar to the jet black in the iPhone 7. But sadly, there's no matte black. It's got a new and improved camera with a bigger aperture, f1.8 for the wide angle and f2.8 for the telephoto lenses. They also have slightly larger sensors, but they're both still 12 megapixels. And the new camera also supports 4K video at 60 frames per second, which is just insane by the way. And finally, the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus have better displays, but it's still an LCD, so not yet an OLED. The iPhone 8 has an all new processor called the A11 Bionic, which is made up of six cores, which consist of four low power cores and two beast cores. They're not actually called beast cores, I just made that up. But the A11 is expected to work like a beast because apparently the low power cores are 70% faster than that of the iPhone 7 and the beast cores are 20% faster than that of the iPhone 7. The iPhone 8 will have two gigabytes of RAM and the iPhone 8 Plus will have three. And that's basically it guys, thank you for watching so much. Oh wait, there's one more thing. The iPhone 10. The cherry on the cake. The naming of the iPhone is also a little weird because you have the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, and then the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, and then the iPhone 10. What happened to 9? I guess the iPhone 10 should be a little scared now, because 7, 8, 9. The first big change is the display. The iPhone 10 has an all new Super Retina display. Yes, Super Retina display which is a new OLED display with a 453 pixel per inch density. That's still behind some of the competitors such as Samsung, but the display is also one which covers the entire front of the phone. It is literally edge to edge, except for that little black bar at the top. Some people hate that black bar at the top, but I for one think that it doesn't really look that bad. And since all the colors have a black bezel, it's pretty hard to notice, so I'm pretty cool with it. But the entire phone just looks Beautiful. The iPhone 10 also looks a little different from the back with the gradients of the camera being equal to infinity. I'm very sorry. The cameras are now vertically arranged with the flash unit being located between the wide angle and the telephoto lenses. 
The cameras are similar to that of the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, except that the iPhone 10 has optical image stabilization, OIS, on both the wide angle and the telephoto lenses. In fact, I think the reason why they put the lens in between the wide angle and the telephoto lens is so that they could free up some space for the two cameras to wiggle around without actually bumping into each other. And the main feature of the iPhone 10 is Face ID. And much like the name suggests, it's actually about using your face rather than your fingerprint to authenticate things like Apple Pay and even unlocking your phone. Face ID is basically this new futuristic technology that works with the help of three sensors located in the little bar at the top of the phone. So there's an infrared camera, a flood illuminator, and a dot projector. The infrared camera is of course to detect the heat from the face of the user. The flood illuminator is not actually a super bright light that blinds you when you look at the phone. It's just an ultraviolet light that is used to light up your face in the dark. And since ultraviolet is invisible to the human eye, it's okay, you won't see anything at all. The dot projector is what's actually detecting your face. It basically puts invisible dots on your face and remembers the position of those dots on your face. There shouldn't be any other face where all the dots fall on exactly the same place, unless of course you have a twin. And even then the dot projector is using over 30,000 reference points. So even with a twin, there is a chance that sometimes you, your twin won't be able to unlock the phone. The real process is of course a lot more complex. What I just told you is the simplest form of what it is doing. But if anyone asks you what it is doing, just say it's magic. They'll believe you. But some people say, what if I'm sleeping? and someone just puts the phone up to my face while I'm asleep. Wouldn't the phone get unlocked then? Well, no, Face ID only works if you actually look at the phone. It has to see your eyes looking at the phone. It's like all those teachers that say, I have to see your eyes, otherwise you're on your phones. The same thing for your phone. The phone has to see your eyes, otherwise you're not on your phone. And no, Face ID did not fail its first ever demo. It's just that Face ID was not enabled on the phone because it was detecting the face of the people setting up the demo and it saw that it wasn't correct, so it disabled Face ID. Much like Touch ID is disabled if you scan the wrong fingerprint 10 or so times. The iPhone 10 also has no home button. And some of you are gonna be like, wait, the iPhone 7 didn't have a home button. Well, the iPhone 7 had a cutout for the home button where you could press and it would take you home. But the iPhone 10 doesn't even have that. It's just flat glass. So what do you do? Well, Apple says gestures. Apple has placed a tiny black bar at the bottom of the screen to act as a home button, but it's not really a button. You have to swipe up from the bar in order to go home. To go to your app switcher, you have to swipe up and hold for a split second. And now some of you might say, hang on, what about the control center? I used to swipe up from the bottom for that. Well, Apple has moved the control center to the top right corner of the phone. Dragging down diagonally will give you the control center, but of course you drag down from the center and the notification bar is still there. The iPhone 10, unlike the iPhone 8, is only available in two colors, space gray and silver. It's also available in two capacities, 64 gigabytes and 256 gigabytes. 64 gigabytes is $1,579 and 256 gigabytes is $1,829 pretty expensive. The iPhone 8, also in the same configurations, costs $1,079 for the 64 gigabytes and $1,329 for the 256 gigabytes. The iPhone 8 Plus costs $1,229 for the 64 gigabytes and $1,479 for the 256 gigabytes. And that's basically it. That's all you need to know about the iPhone 8, 8 Plus, the iPhone 10, and everything else that happened at the keynote. What do you think about the iPhone 10? the 8 and 8 plus let me know down in the comments section below thank you all so much for watching until next time have a great great life and stay awesome